Hello and welcome to this week's Granny's Garden. Now this week is a special edition and the theme is five plants I wish I had never planted in my garden. Now in this video I am going to be collaborating with Rachel Darlington, a well-known plant expert, YouTuber, lecturer and author. And I'm going to be linking her YouTube channel which is Gardening at Dewensa in Ireland in the description below. So today you're getting two Irish ladies for the price of one. What can I say? You can never have too many Irish leprechauns in your life, now can you? Now gardening is a learning experience, but sometimes you find you've bitten off more than you can chew. So let's dive straight in at number five on my hate list, honeysuckle. Growing up in Ireland, my mother planted a honeysuckle, a puny little honeysuckle. And she talked to us, sang to us, tickled it behind the ears, everything short of saying three Hail Marys and lighting a candle for us. But it remained puny all of its life, constantly struggling. But every year it pushed up three or sometimes four puny little flowers, the same as the puny little plant. But as soon as it came out, my mother was ecstatic, over the moon. And I have to admit that even that puny little plant, the scent was ingrained on my brain. That heavy, heavy scent carried on a summer evening breeze constantly etched on my brain for the rest of my life. It is absolutely beautiful. So fast forward maybe about 10 years and I am living in southeast Madrid and I've got my very very first garden and I haven't got a clue what I'm doing. If this is the curve of learning to be a gardener I'm right here or maybe even here. So armed with good intentions but a total lack of knowledge I head off to my first garden centre. <laughs> here I am with my little shopping trolley and as soon as I go in I pick it up the well-known scent that's etched on my brain. So I follow my nose and find this beautiful section of honeysuckle. And they were magnificent, nothing like the plant my mother grew. They were thick, bushy, lush and full of flowers and the scent was incredible. Now, alarm bells at this stage should have been ringing like crazy. How could mum, after 20 years, have a puny little plant? And here was a luscious, beautiful green plant in a tiny, four inch nursery cans. Did I put two and two together? You have got to be kidding. I was about to learn the hard way how climate affects plants. So I planted it and I was writing home to my mum, you have got to see this, you've got to smell, this is absolutely wonderful. Well this marriage bliss lasted all of one month. As soon as the plant settled into its area, it said, oh I like this, and it started to send sprouts up left, right and centre. And as soon as it touched something solid, a fence, a wall, the ground, boom, it stuck to it like a magnet, wove its way in and out of it and took over the structure completely. I had unwittingly planted a triffid, determined to take over the entire world, starting with my garden. Nowadays, of course, with the knowledge I have now, I can wander around the gardens and see my poor neighbours struggling with the same thing that happened to me all those years ago. As a matter of fact, I have one neighbour around the corner that had planted on the street fence and it had grown completely invading the actual footpath. You couldn't pass on the footpath, so you had to cut it back. And of course, honeysuckle is like ivy, is like cypress hedges. When you cut it back, there's only green on the outside. It's not like these. If I cut this back, it's green all the way through. The honeysuckle knot. You cut it back and you're left with this interior that is dark brown and horrible. The difference between, say, a honeysuckle and a cypress hedge, the cypress hedge you cut it back and it won't regrow, but the honeysuckle there's no way you can kill it. The cycle will begin all over again, it'll start growing, it'll start sprouting and it'll start invading all over again. So what did I take out or what did I learn from this experience? Location, location and location and not just for houses, for plants too. Depending on where you put it and the climate, plants have nothing to do with what it says on the tag. If on the tag it says two meters, if you give it the right conditions and the right location, you can multiply that by four. It becomes an absolute triffid. So beware of what you buy and where you put it. So for plants number four and number three, we're actually fact going to head over to Rachel's garden in Ireland and she's going to give you an account of some of her nightmare experiences. So over to you, Rachel. Hello from Una's channel. I'm Rachel from Dwensa Garden in Ireland and I'm here to tell you about my fourth and third plant that I wish I'd never planted in my garden. And thank you for having me, Una. Okay, so number four. Number four might come as a surprise because it is the black elder or Sambucus nigra. Now this plant produces a large shrub with dark leaves. And in, I guess about midsummer, it produces flowers that are pale pink, which look absolutely spectacular against the dark foliage of the bush. 
then later in the season those flowers turn into berries which look just amazing on the bush in their own right but you can also collect them and make them into jellies or uh, cordials. So this plant is one that has a hell of a lot going for it and one that I embraced enthusiastically when I was starting out with my garden. I planted so so many of them. Now it's a plant that likes full sun or partial shade uh, well-drained soil but actually it does quite well in most good garden soils so when this plant has so much going for it why have I put it on my list and the reason I put it on my list is that the pruning in spring is a big deal and gets to be more of a big deal as time goes on so this is a plant that needs pruning with a loppers and I have a video somewhere about how to do this. So you remove about a third of the branches and you do this for several years but then maybe about the fourth or fifth year you need to go a little bit lower. So you've removed the top and every year it gets a bit higher and a bit higher and a bit higher. So after four or five years you need to go lower down and cut into very thick wood that is really really hard to get through you need a saw and I can't do it so I need to enlist the help of one of the male members of my family and they do this for me and then you know what then then you have so much wood that you have to do something with now of course if you have a chipper you can put this wood through the chipper and put it on your compost but there's another job that nobody likes doing so <laughs> you may find that this wood ends up in a pile somewhere in your garden and if you have to prune in this way every year that gets to be a big deal over time. So yeah, Sambucus or the elder bush, beautiful, beautiful thing. But now at this stage I do wish I hadn't planted quite so many of them in my garden. And now we move on to number three on my list. And this is a plant that has so much going for it in terms of appearance, which is why I bought it and put it in my garden in the first place. Now this plant is a perennial, it's a bulb, and it's called Crocosmia lucifer, my number three. So anyone who watches my channel may be wondering why I'm classifying Crocosmia lucifer as a plant I wish I'd never planted when I cited it in last year's top 10 perennials. And I did that because this really is a beautiful, beautiful plant when it's in flower. It has long arching stems and at the tip there are flowers that are blood red in colour and they look absolutely gorgeous. I suppose it starts into flower about late summer. It likes sun or dappled shade and any normal garden soil. It's quite unfussy. Actually, I think it will take a range of soils. But now I'm going to tell you the reason why I wish I'd never planted this beautiful flower. And the reason is that over time it produces an enormous, enormous clump and a whole big heap of corms that rise up over the surface of the ground and become a big, big mass that you can do nothing with. Now, if you look at the books, the books will say divide in spring. You know what I say to that? I laugh out loud. You cannot divide this plant, not unless you have, I don't know, a mini digger or something. This becomes really, really impenetrable. So when you plant Crocosmia lucifer, make sure you plant it somewhere where it can be let do its thing. Never plant in a border, but plant it in some part of the garden that's relatively low maintenance where you won't mind if it spreads and you will come down and enjoy its beautiful flowers in the late summer. Okay, that's all I have to say. Thank you for having me, Una. And now you're going to hear about Una's top two and one. Come to my channel later. Bye. Well, thank you very much, Rachel, for that. It's great to see that no matter where you are on this planet, all gardeners find problems and overcome them. The good thing is that we become better gardeners for it. We learn from our experience and we learn, oh, above all, from our mistakes. So now let's dive in straight at number two on my hate list. And it's garden bullies. And there are loads and loads and loads of garden bullies. But I'm going to go back to my first garden again. I love cooking. So I decided I wanted a herb garden right next to the house. So I planted thyme, sage, oregano, parsley, 
and dare I say it, I planted mint into the ground, straight into the ground. Oh my gosh, how stupid can you be? I was. So between the honeysuckle at the end of the garden and the mint at the front, which took over absolutely everywhere, I was doing a great job as a gardener, wasn't I? So what did I learn from it? Lesson number one, two, three or 105. Learn how plants propagate. If you see them sending out runners or shoots or underground runners, learn from that mistake. I didn't know it was as easy as getting a mint pot and sinking the pot into the ground. Then it can't extend those underground roots. A dead easy solution. The problem is you have to know about it. And I didn't. So now you get to number one on my hate list. Those of you who normally follow me on YouTube probably have guessed by now. The bane of my life. Ivy. I hate the stuff. In a comment recently, I got asked, do you have anything good to say about ivy? Well, it's evergreen and it grows fast. Too fast. But that's it. Everything else for me is negative. If you use it as a hedge, it's only green on the outside. So when you clip it back to stop it overcoming everything, it remains brown and ugly for the time it takes to regrow. It also has all the dust and debris contained on the inside and it harbours spiders and I hate spiders. Apart from that, it is a bully, a bully, bully, bully. It takes over everything and its underground tendrils and overground tendrils stick to everything and reproduce everywhere. This time I didn't actually plant the ivy. I bought the house and the ivy was already here, unfortunately. When I walk into a garden now, anybody's garden, I walk in with a gardener's eye. It's a well-trained eye now. I started gardening in my 20s and I'm now in my 60s. And I have learned a whole heap all through the years. There's nothing like experience and making mistakes to make you an expert gardener. But I knew what I was getting myself into. The very first time I viewed this house, I said, that has got to go. And I set about getting rid of it last year. It took us weeks. And even now, I've still got to control it. Because I'm planting a woodland area and I've got a shrub border over here and it winds its way along the ground and up the plants as well. If you do want to plant ivy, my advice would be plant it if you can contain it. Don't let it go up a living structure like a tree or a bush or a shrub. It has to be something like a pergola, metal, wood, whatever you want, but not a living structure. And to contain it. If it's like a hole in the ground with hardscaping in a patio area, that's fine as long as it can't send out its tendrils or kill something on its way up. Then plant ivy. If not, don't. And just to prove a point, last week I was at my daughter's house doing some work there. And two doors down, her neighbour had a magnificent 40-year-old cedar tree. Absolutely massive tree, absolutely beautiful. At some stage, he let ivy wander its way up. He probably had no idea what he was getting himself into. Now, the ivy is like a fortress going right up to the top. It's like an ivy tower. And it has girdled and completely strangled and killed that tree. All you see now are the dead branches pleading up to the sky. It is so sad to see it. And unfortunately, it's just due to a lack of knowledge. So I don't want that in my garden, not with all these beautiful plants and shrubs and trees I'm planting. I don't want it out of my garden because certainly in this climate, it gets out of control too quickly. So for me, number one on my hate list is definitely ivy. Now, if you want to see plants number four and number three of my top five nightmares, head over to Rachel's channel. I'll leave the link in the description below and you can see them. Meanwhile, let's leave the nightmares to one side and hopefully next week we'll have some sweet dreams instead of nightmares. So for the moment, Rachel, thank you very much for having me on your channel. And for the rest of you, I'll see you here in Granny's Garden next week. Bye-bye now.